Hello everybody, my name is Joe Jackson. I'm the product manager here at Antares Homes. And today I'm gonna to guide you as we navigate through a marketing floor plan to help you guys better understand some of the items that you would typically see when you're reviewing a marketing floor plan. Typically you would get those as a handout or in a packet. The plan we're gonna look at today is a 2622. So if you're ready, let's get started. We're gonna start at the foyer and you'll see on the marketing file each room for the most part is labeled. And as you enter the foyer, you have uh, two arched or square openings, one in front of you and one on the side of you. The one on the side is open to the dining room and those dashed lines across that initial opening lets me know that there is an either an arched opening or a square type opening that's gonna lead you into that space. And the same in front of you, if you look toward the space going in toward, you know, looking toward the family room, you see another dashed opening. It's not nearly as wide as the one on the right, but it also signifies that there is either an arched or square opening in front of you as well that you're gonna walk through to get into that next space. But starting with the dining room, if you go into that dining room, you see kind of a octagon shaped dashed line. What that's telling you is that in that ceiling, you have an octagon shaped recess or pop-up in the ceiling of that particular room. So the room's gonna have a nine foot flat ceiling, but I wanna say about a one foot six from each wall is gonna box up to a different height ceiling in that space. That's what that little dashed line means within that dining room space. So if we come back into the foyer and head into the space that's typically we would call this space, it's not labeled on this plan, but we would call that like the extended entry. You walk through an arched or square opening and you see another rectangle inside that space on the ceiling. And what that is, is again, you have a flat ceiling that boxes up to a higher ceiling in that space. It's a decorative element that gives a little bit more character to that space. And as you continue through that extended entry, you see another set of dashed lines in front and also to the left. The one in the, in the front of you, that again, takes you into the rest of the house, but the one on the left takes you into down the side to where the secondary bedrooms are. But again, that dashed opening is is letting you know that there's another arch or square opening that you have to pass through to get to that next space. And if we continue to go forward, you see that in that next space, you have additional, basically, uh, ceiling with another box up or recess pop up in the ceiling. And once you get to the end of that, you see that there's another arched opening that leads you into that kitchen family room space. So coming down that extended foyer, you have one, two, three different arched or square openings that lead you inside that space until you break that last one and you get into the, the kitchen area. So if we come into the uh, kitchen area, you see as soon as you step in, step past the arched opening, you see on the right hand side, you have what we call a niche. And the niche is basically a little place that you can put decorative elements, pictures and things of that nature to, to more customize that particular space to to your liking. On the left hand side, you'll see that you have a long island with the sink and a dishwasher within that island. And that island is a flat surface. It's not raised, it's all one continuous flat surface. And what tells me that is you look at the perimeter of that island, because there's no solid line that's breaking that depth of that opening, that lets me know that that's a completely flat uh, countertop. There is no break like you would see in older bars that has a raised bar and a lower countertop. This is just saying this is one flat island all the way across. Okay, and underneath that island, you see the dashed lines insinuating that there's actually a wall underneath that island, basically to help support that space. And also, the, so you have, the, you know, you can support that countertop that's overhanging past that. Okay, and if you continue into the family room, you see in the right corner is where your fireplace will be installed and that big open space delineates your family room space. Then making our way to the nook, you see on the left-hand side of the nook wall, there's a dashed line. And what that's telling you is that the wall at the exterior is like a nine foot tall wall, but that ceiling is sloping up to a higher ceiling. So that dashed line is letting you, the customer know that, you're, that the wall, that exterior wall is at one height, but that ceiling is sloping up to a higher ceiling. So the nook and the family room space both have a higher ceiling than what the exterior wall is gonna show on that nook side, on the side of the, you know, basically that side exterior wall. And also in addition to that, you see in the nook there's basically what we call a box out window seat. That's a little area where the seat's about 18 inches off the finished floor. Then you have two windows above it. 
that's what that picture is delineating. So if we make our way over back to the master bedroom, but before you get to the master bedroom, you'll see that there's another series of dashed lines that's creating either an arched or square top opening to one, enter into the vestibule of the master. And then once you're in that vestibule, you'll see there's another niche located in that wall that you can have something, again, decorative or painted a different color to draw you into that space. So once you're in that vestibule, you see the door into the master, so you can go inside the master bedroom. But if you look on that far wall of the master, you see that dashed line again, that's telling you that that exterior wall is at one height, but the ceiling is sloping to a different height. So that outside exterior wall could be like at nine feet, but that plane is actually sloping up to possibly a 10 foot ceiling in that master space. And that's what that dashed line is gonna you know, represent. And if you make your way into the master bathroom, you see you have basically the tub that's centered along with two vanities on either side of the tub. And it's kind of the same look as the uh, seat that you saw in the nook area. You have a similar situation above the master tub that's gonna have a box out above the tub with the window at the rear. So basically you have a little ledge, I mean that's maybe eight to eight inches above where the actual tub deck is. You have about eight inches, then you have a ledge that you can decorate however you see, you see fit. And of course you have the window that's behind it. And directly opposite of that space, you see what's called, basically what would be your shower. And if you notice, there's a, a dashed line, you know, at the entrance of that shower. That's gonna tell me that there's either an arched or lower ceiling than what the main ceiling is in that space to kind of give more emphasis on that shower area. And in, and in addition to that, you see that there's, that the shower is like three feet wide, but then there's a long solid line. That tells me there's, there's basically a seat in that shower. So that seat's gonna be raised above the actual shower to about 18 inches above the finished floor. So you'll have a seat in the, the whole length of that shower. Now, if you continue into the master closet, you see that same sloped ceiling in the bathroom and also the master closet. So basically that exterior wall, so if you look at the plan, the exterior wall of the master closet the master bathroom and the master bedroom start to the nine foot plate and basically slopes to a taller ceiling. And also in that master closet, you see you got two sets of lines in that master closet. The, the main set that goes around the perimeter of the closet, that represents a rod and shelf. And in, in Terry's homes, typically the master closet would have one section that's two rods, two shelves, and everything else will be one rod, one shelf inside that master closet. But you also have, in addition to the, the one rod, one shelf, you have a series of you know, like shoe shelves. When you first open, come into that uh, master closet, you see that, that solid line on the, basically on the left-hand side of the plan. That tells me that there's basically a bunch of, you typically with us, five shelves that, you, that are designed for basically like a shoe rack. So that's your shoe rack and you have your, rod and shelf around the perimeter to hang your clothes. We can go to the far side of the kitchen, then come through another arched or square opening to access bedroom two and bedroom three. You see that arch, and if you go into bedroom two, you see basically on the left-hand side of that exterior wall, again, you have a ceiling that's probably at nine foot, and you have a ceiling that's sloping up to 10 foot inside that, that bedroom area. Same for bedroom two. Now we make our way into the utility room. You see, in the utility room, we also have a rod and shelf over the washer and dryers. Now those can be upgraded to upper cabinets, but the standard is to have a rod and shelf over your washer and dryer. And it's typically the width of the, of the washer and dryer pair. So like five, five, five foot six, something along those lines as far as the width. Now also, if you make your way into the garage area, you'll see a square with a circle in it. That's basically to let you know where your water heater is gonna be located. We typically don't put water heaters in the attic because if they, you know, bust or leak, that would cause way more damage. So we typically install those in your garage on an exterior wall so that it can drain out pretty easily. In that particular utility room, there's an option for a base cabinet and sink. So you could have cabinets, upper cabinets along that whole back wall of that utility room if you so desire. So that would be available to you as well. Okay, and as we make our way to the covered patio area, which is behind the nook, 
you'll see that this particular plant offers two different size covered patios. But I what I want to bring to your attention on the covered patio options is that each covered patio option is going to come standard with a six by six post, which is going to be the support system for that covered patio, which is that little small square that shows on the covered patio. But around that is a bigger dash line. And what that dash line is basically trying to tell you is that there's an option to do an actual brick post in lieu of the wooden six by six post. So if you wanted to have a brick post as opposed to a wooden one, there's an option to encase that post in brick so you have a brick post that matches the brick on the rear of your home. Thanks again for being here. I hope you gain more insight as to how to read a floor plan. If you have any additional questions, feel free to go to our website. It's antarishomes.com. There you'll find additional resources to assist you in your future home purchasing process.